is this core 2 duo worth it in 2024? Well, let's find out. Yo, what is up everybody, and today I'm gonna talk about the core 2 duo E7500. This may be familiar if you watched my video about building my own NAS. Not a rapper, a network attack storage. So the specs I have is a Dell Inspiron 560 motherboard, which surprisingly has no proprietary stuff on the motherboard despite second generation Intel processors and more modern Intel chips in Dell Inspirons and other types of Dell models that has a ton of proprietary stuff you can't even get around unless you have special adapters. The CPU I have is a Core 2 Duo E7500 which has two cores but no threads according to what I saw on Intel's website. It's also a 35mm semiconductor technology and 2.93 GHz base clock. I only have 4GB of memory, which I know I had 8GB when I first built the, my first NAS, but it got some issues, so I stick with 4GB. Now let's do the montage of me replacing the CPU. So I plugged everything in as well as my SSD I, I previously used on another PC, which it will be in a video of me fetching a PC on this channel in the near future. So I turn on the Core 2 Duo computer, then I get the message on the screen, then it boots into my Windows 11 operating system that's installed on my SSD. I loaded up Cinebench 23, but due to the lack of memory I have installed, I can't seem to get it working, even if I did, Cinebench 2024. But when I disconnect my SSD and put my hard drive in that has Ubuntu server loaded in, it runs just fine. But I did have Docker and Portana installed. If you don't know what Docker is, it's a way to containerize applications. Basically means that it has some code inside of their own boxes that can work on its own. Kind of like a virtual computer, but it's not. So the conclusion is, don't buy the Core 2 Duo components unless you have lying around in your area. And if you're thinking of repur repurposing it and get away from Lanfer, unfortunately there's not much options to go for. First option is what I did in this video. Turn it into a server that can run apps such as your own VPN service called Terrascale or OpenVPN. Gaming server like Minecraft and Counter-Strike 2. The second option is to turn it into a Windows 7 or a XP Retro gaming computer that some games may not be compatible with modern computers today. If you are planning on using a desktop, I wouldn't recommend loading Windows unless you have 8GB of memory. It may be a bit sluggish running Windows with two cores and eight gigabytes of memory still. But using a desktop Linux OS like Ubuntu, Fedora, or Linux Mint would be a better option because it's more lightweight than some stupid bloatware Microsoft always do to modern Windows updates. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and be sure to hit the like button. Also join the Discord server if you haven't already. I'm trying to get this Discord server 
to be more active since I keep seeing people leaving due to the lack of activity they see on my Discord server. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you don't miss none of the content that I'll be uploading on this YouTube channel. Peace.